Hi. Here's a really cool thing about how the mind works. It's called reconsolidation theory. And it was first developed um, between 10 and 15 years ago, first discovered by, or postulated by a guy called um, Joseph Ledoux, Professor Joseph Ledoux. Now, what it suggests is that every single time you recall a memory, it becomes unstable. And what I mean by unstable is it becomes capable of being changed. Memory is plastic, it can be molded. In fact, the suggestion is that every single time you recall a memory, you change it by default because of the mood you're in, the place you're in. You cannot go back to something without it becoming different. Now this is really powerful news for us as therapists because it gives us a reason to examine old memories. We can help clients um, access old limiting, old negative, old traumatic memories and change them using the range of techniques that we have available to us. And it's a bit like opening up a Word document and seeing that there are lots of typos in it. And changing all the typos, maybe changing the, um, the formatting and the font to make it look more attractive, to make it look more positive, and then pressing save, and it goes back to the hard drive. In a sense, a lot of what we're doing in therapy is utilizing this reconsolidation theory. And it also guards against, or should guard against, approaches where you're just encouraged to talk about your problems as if that's gonna change them. It's an old Freudian idea that simply talking about something that's happened to you will cathart, will release the negative impact on it. Reconsolidation theory suggests the opposite is true, that if you just talk about a memory, it's open and unstable. You get upset and you cry about it. It's like pouring a jug of tears into the, into the memory before you click save, and it becomes worse than it was before. So over time, you're just repeating a cycle of making the memory worse and worse over time. The only reason we should ever go back to a memory, a negative memory, is to change it either through our changing of our perception of it, the meaning of it, or the way that it's structured in the brain. And as cognitive fitness therapists, we have tools to help you manage to do either one or both of those things in order to release you from old limiting memories or beliefs that have emerged from your childhood or earlier times in your life. So think about how that might help you and maybe get in contact with a cognitive therapist near you.